What's up, YouTube? Stocks by the numbers. Welcome back. And I wanted to do a video here on Nike Incorporated, ticker symbol NKE, listed here on the NAS on, on the New York Stock Exchange. Excuse me. So I used to say in the NASDAQ. But uh, right here, stock closed $113.37, up $0.34, cents, uh, roughly one-third of a percent there on the day. As we see, after hours, we're slowly climbing up. We were down into the low 109s. Now we're at about 110.40, and you can see down about $3, 2.7% right here after hours. Does seem to be bouncing up, bouncing down a little bit, but overall, looking at Nike here, you can see just this tremendous growth here that it experienced throughout the 80s and the 90s, which really drove the stock up. And again, I drew out these top trend lines, and I have my bottom trend line going to where it pulled back, uh, looks like uh, around September, October of 2022. And we just drew that trend line. And of course, after this big rise, I capped it at the top and then drew it across to that trend line. So technically, we could be in a very, very long term, looking like a 20 year, 25 year ascending wedge. And it could all potentially be coming down uh, years down the road. Of course, we don't have anything to worry about right now. Uh, however, here in the short term, if I zoom in a little bit for you, you can see, interestingly enough, uh, the stock pulled back to like this, yeah, like this 110, 109-ish level and then bounced up a little bit. Right now, it seems to be moving. It's at $111 now, slowly climbing. But that was a key level, as you see here. It's where a lot of candles closed and then reopened. And you can see a gap down right there at that level. And you can see, again, a close and an open right there. That's where the resistance was. And there's a slight gap up right there inside of that circle going from green candle to green candle. So that was a key level right there. And, you know, it, it looks like they're slowly bouncing it off that level. But in my opinion, they really shouldn't be uh, because the company obviously could really be viewed as either fair valued, uh, potentially overvalued, but, uh, you know, really not too bad. Uh, if we come down here and look at some of the numbers, we have a market cap of 174 and a quarter billion. They're yielding a 1.2% dividend for you to own shares of the company. And we have a PE of 32.6, right? So the PE, it could be viewed as a little heavy. That's why they can chunk that down to like 25, 26, 27, and the stock could sell off a big chunk. But if we look at the market cap, 174 and a quarter billion, we come down here, this is 2021 numbers, right? And for 2022, they were estimating, I believe, 50.99 billion. And I think they posted around 50 billion. I'm not exactly sure if they beat that number, but we can call it 50 billion for the year of 2022. And 50 billion compared to this market cap, that's about three and a half times annual revenue, right? So it's not the craziest multiple that we've seen. However, they can easily, again, pull it back to simply three times annual revenue. Three times 50 would be 150 billion. Right. So this com this stock could be ready to take like a 20, 25 billion dollar haircut real quick. Is it going to happen overnight? Probably not. Of course not. But in my opinion, see, we have this gap up going all the way back to November 10th here, 2022. We have a gap up that candle closed 99.68 and then we gapped up and we have yet to fill that gap. And if you see here going back to May, the stock was up at the 128s and then it just plummeted straight down to the low 100s here, hit a low of 102.90 as we see, and then it bounced and retraced to this fib of 114.76. Now, of course, during this whole time frame here, this whole little rally, that started, as you see on the bottom of the screen, June 1st, right? So this was the June rally that we saw in pretty much every stock. But what we're seeing here is the rejection here of 114.76, and then the pullback here, it says to 107.30 before trying to reclaim that 20-day simple moving average to try to retest and rally up going into these earnings. And then, of course, the profitability comes in light, roughly 2.5% below analyst expectations. However, coming in above expectations on the revenue side by about a quarter of a billion dollars in quarterly revenue. So somehow, some way, this company just continues to increase revenue year over year, quarter over quarter, like clockwork. So it's a very, very hard company to bet against. However, when we have a situation like this where, where we have a, a potential technical lining up for us, again, this gap fill slightly sub 100 right here, and then we have something like this where they bring the stock down roughly uh, three and a third percent. Now you're seeing back to the 109 mark and supposedly, you know, was up here. They're bringing it down. Then they try to rise it back up. But uh, uh, earnings are light. So they're bringing it back down. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now that it's confirmed in the numbers, that the numbers were light, the margins were, you know, obviously decreasing, and that's not what Wall Street wanted to see, so the stock is down 3% and change. Now we can jump in and ride the wave down and bring this to 
uh, at least the mid to low 100s. And in the short term, obviously, if you want to grab some puts, you can take advantage of the situation here. But overall, again, I'd say this is more of a short term play. So if you did want to uh, short shares, if that's the way you like to do it, if you don't like to do options, I mean, you know, obviously you could do it as you see here, it just broke 109. So it might not be the worst idea, but I, I honestly wouldn't get too greedy. So if it comes down here, like near this FIB level, and it really gets to like that 101 range, 100, like, and it looks like it's approaching that gap fill, you're better off just covering and, and taking the money and run on the, uh, on the short position there on NKE. But again, that's just my opinion. Whatever you do with this information is entirely your own prerogative. But in my opinion, we do have this gap fill. Earnings came in light again. They're bouncing the stock around, but it really should be down here at that 109 and then continue to sell off back here, in my opinion, in the next couple of days. Switching over here to stock charts, uh, as we see again, they rallied it up in June. You can see it bounced around this 200-day moving average here, bounced off of it a couple of times, and now again the stock 108.50 right now dropping as we speak. So it is now below that mid Bollinger band of 109.27 on the daily. And that's why, again, next stop should be, if this Bollinger band slowly moves up, should be like 103 and a half, right? This MACD is going to begin to curl downward and potentially cross to accelerate. RSI was rising, closed at a, we'll call it, you know, upwards of around 55. But again, it's going to start dropping now. And if we switch over here to the weekly, RSI was rising. It was 50. It was relatively high before that, too. So now I think they're really going to chunk it down and retest that 30 mark on the weekly. So that, that's why I feel like it, it may potentially be down for some time. Even the bottom Bollinger Band here on the weekly is, is low 105s. So that's why, in my opinion, it, it really should drop to low 100s. And um, if it does get to that mark... Hopefully, Wall Street will agree with me here, and they will bring it down to retest this FIB at 101.87, probably slightly bounce it up to 103, 104, and then it should break that FIB, fill that gap, 99.68, and then they can bounce it and they can bring it back up to 110, 115, or whatever, going into the next quarter's earnings. But here in the short term, I believe I'm right, and as I'm saying this, you can see the stock is now down to 108, down over 4.5%. So I'm going to end it there. Definitely something for you to keep an eye on uh, going into the next couple of days of trading. But again, this is just my opinion. If you disagree, do me a favor. Just let me know in the comment section below. No need to dislike the video. Just let me know that you think it might bounce up here or, you know, the, the revenue is outpacing the profitability. So either way, it's a buy, right? You know, if you have a logical argument for Nike, please let us know down in the comment section. But, uh, you know, like I always say, like the video, thumbs up, helps out the algorithm, helps me get more eyes on the channel. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. That is our handshake agreement. I'll continue to make these videos, give you guys updates. Uh, you know, if there's any symbols you want me to look at, you can leave them in the comments section. I always say that. And uh, again, I, I know sometimes I don't get around to them right away, but, you know, I will get to them. And uh, all I ask, again, handshake agreement, you want to watch the content, you want to Give me a couple of recommendations, a couple of stocks to analyze for you. We can take a quick look at it. All I ask, push the subscribe button. That is how you help me help you. That's all I ask. But moving forward overall, like I do always say, I understand that the markets are rocky and they're volatile and they're very uncertain. But I want to wish everyone success. I hope everyone makes a couple of dollars. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to catch you guys in the next video.